elevate your audio game with Soundrise's new Pro 5 speaker stands. Made for five inch monitors, their new Pro 5 stands feature an impeccable metal build, silicone isolation pads, and a lip on the back to hold your speakers firmly in place. These are made from the ground up to reduce those nasty vibrations on your desk, reducing unwanted sound, and to give you the best version of your speakers. And if you need something a little bit bigger, Soundrise has you covered too. Find out more and visit the link below to Soundrise. Hi, I'm Josh, and today we have a classic battle of beauty versus brains. The beauty, this is the Edifier E25 Luna Eclipse in red, and the brains are, um, well, they're nowhere to be found. Now this speaker I actually find to be quite pretty to look at. Mine are finished in red, obviously, but they also offer a glossy white and a glossy black if you choose to roll that way. My second option probably would have been a glossy white. Now the inputs on the back are a bit of a sad story. 3.5 millimeter only, and then you have the option of Bluetooth. No other options are provided. So you can hook your phone up via Bluetooth and your laptop up via 3.5 millimeter, or if you're feeling really crazy, you can swap those. Oh, and before you ask, yes, there is a Bluetooth delay seemingly around the half second mark. Yes, Josh, we get it, the inputs suck, but what about the design, the beautiful design? Let's talk about the design for a sec. First, the drivers. 19 millimeter silk dome tweeter in the front, as well as a three inch base driver. In the back, in this little mail slot right here, you have actually dual three inch passive radiators per side, totaling four. Now on the surface, this all seems well and good, but you might start to notice some weird design choices that don't actually make a whole lot of sense, like this red bar over the tweeter. What this should be doing is protecting the drivers from, let's say, curious adolescence, shout out to lock picking lawyer but there's so much room in there that I could poke this thing with a motorcycle glove on and it would still poke the driver. So definitely not doing what it should be designed to do and it's really just there for looks. Now they could have easily put a metal grill over that and then the bar on top of it to maintain its beautiful looks whilst protecting the drivers, but that's not what they chose to do. And so again, we see beauty over brains. Now underneath you have these large rubber feet that are covering the entire surface of the bottom. Then on the left side of the right speaker, you have these touch sensitive power and volume controls. Now those same power and volume controls are on the included remote. Now notably, the power side is the right side, which also happens to be the right side, but notably you cannot switch the orientation like you can on some other speakers. Now, like my entire high school experience, the shape here is actually a bit of a missed opportunity. Let me explain. So instead of having a sharp angle that this is fixed at, I actually think a rubber mount on the bottom would have been superior, kind of like a cradle. Let me explain why. See, the problem with this speaker and the biggest missed opportunity here is the desk limitations. So if your desk is too shallow, the angle is gonna be too low. If your desk is too deep, the angle is going to be too high and it's going to kind of shoot over your head. You're not going to be able to hit the sweet spot. So how do you fix this? You create it with a rubber cradle that is actually going to have this mount onto and be able to change the direction and angle that you're sitting at. And this has so many benefits other than just a desk. For example, if these are on stands, all of a sudden you can do completely forward firing sound if you want. Or if these are actually up high on a shelf, you can actually angle them down if you have a completely rounded build with a cradle that's just gonna hold it in place. Now, while this is a very cool and definitely unique design with a little bit more thought, it would have been a lot more functional. Even further, without the passive radiators needing to be in between each other in this little weird slot here, if they were placed on the side, they actually would have had more slots in the back for more inputs, like digital inputs, like USB and optical. But because of the slot here, they have to accommodate that and fit all the electronics in this little section rather than the entire area of the rear. So this finally brings us to the sound. It's about what you would expect of this thing, a little bit thin and a little bit hollow. So at the top end out of this tweeter, this is not particularly well resolving or very forward. And at higher volumes, it actually starts to kind of crackle and distort a little bit, not very good. Now the mid range coming from this bass driver is primarily what makes up the majority of the sound quality. Unfortunately, it comes across as fairly hollow and boxy sounding and it doesn't sound particularly clean. And then the bass response. While this three inch driver is certainly not going to provide a shitload of bass 
for you base heads. It is more than I expected, probably due to those passive radiators, but I think it could have been more given a better design. So those passive radiators, well, kind of like docking, they're gonna be, sorry, they're gonna be firing into each other. Now the pressure wave from each should equal resistance for the other, reducing overall effectiveness. This actually would have been probably a far superior design if the passive radiators were either facing the back, like on these vanity speakers up here, or if the passive radiators were on the side, which I actually think would probably be the superior option to keep the more alien, cool looks but not sacrifice on sound quality. So functionally, within what this does, it does function pretty well. And if you're a person who wants to have speakers for the sake of having speakers and design is high on your priority list, then I have no problem recommending this if you're okay with the limitations and if you're okay with not getting something that sounds better. Otherwise, if you think you can do better, which I certainly think you can, I would highly recommend getting Edifier's own R1280 dBs, the Yamo S801 PMs, or the Mica PB42Xs. I think all of those are gonna provide a much better experience at the sacrifice of a little beauty.